everyone. I am Leif and welcome to Kingdom Family Talk. And I'm so excited to have my dear friend and brother, David Wagner. And uh, he's been a friend for many, many years. And I even, I have some covenant friends and, and David is definitely one of them. And has meant so much to me, to my wife, to our family, and he's part of our family. So we are actually family together so i don't feel like i'm talking to a guest uh, actually even before this podcast we were just sitting and chatting so we uh, we just wanted to do life together because life comes before ministry and dave has a huge heart for mercy has a ministry called father heart ministry so that tells you a little bit about him but he is an authentic prophet uh, that, that just is empowering people and the next generation of sons and daughters of glory so it is such a joy and such an honor to have you here david Thanks. Thanks. To, it's so great to be with you again, Life. And uh, I feel although we're uh, connected by technology and Zoom today, I could just give you a big old hug because uh, <laughs> I, I just love being with you and doing life with you for sure. Yeah, I think I, think I had a very special, well, I start crying talking about it, but we sat in Australia and Brisbane around the table there and I had lost two of my closest friends uh, and many of the people know Todd Bevan and then later on Dr. Bob Phillips and then suddenly I realized I mean it was this emptiness that had been in since losing it it's like losing a limp the grief and then I, I looked at you and I started to weep and God says I have given you another covenant brother and something took place that healed a empty spot in me and so 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 you're more than a friend in a sense there's something element a, a gift from God in the right timing for me and our family and our movement yeah. thanks it's a great honor and uh, the feelings mutual you came into my life in a similar time and um, and you know I've told the Lord often that I don't need any more meetings or conferences but I'll take as many friends as you give me and if you give me friends let them be covenant friends and uh and so that you're also a gift to me so thanks for that and how are you and molly and the family doing in this season we're all doing great my uh oldest son just got married and my daughter is uh doing well doing a lot of my admin and uh, my three younger ones are just in a great season of life molly started a business right uh five weeks before covid hit and um but the Lord's been blessing it and breathing on it as well and uh, using it for a lot of place for uh, ministry, not just business. And um, the Lord's just opening up amazing doors. I think the last year, as hard as it was for many people, was in some ways a, a gift to us because from traveling on the road for 20 plus years um, and missing a lot of time at home, it's like the Lord redeemed the time. And so uh, lots of great heart connections with the Lord and, and with my kids. And so we're, uh, we're thriving in this season. Just, uh, I'm just curious, what do you see as a bigger picture in regard to what is actually the father doing? What time is it that we are living in? If you were to describe this season for the body of Christ, I know there's a shaking going on all over the world, but in the middle of it, if you were to just read, what, what are, are you hearing the father say about this season? In the middle of the shaking, there is redemption. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is a time of redemption, but also a time of perspective. Many people declared last year, 2020 was the year of vision. And I understand where they got that. And I think it wasn't necessarily not accurate. Um, but I think our vision got blurried because we didn't know how to react or respond in the moment. And, and so this is a year of perspective of seeing through heaven's eyes, hearing through the heart, looking through uh, the lens of love. Mm -hmm. I think all of creation is longing, is crying out for the manifestation and revelation of sons, of the sons and daughters of God. And so it's really interesting for me and very important for me in this season to look through uh, the Father's eyes, to look through the heart of the Lord. And, you know, uh, a lot of times we can focus on the problem, but you don't need to be prophetic to know there's a problem. You, de you do need to be prophetic to know there's a solution mm -hmm. and to speak and prophesy the solution. So I believe it's a time of solutions as well, which is really, really important. Uh, I, I said um, last week in a meeting, it just like it was inspired by the Holy Spirit that um, really what we're experiencing right now is birth pains. So 
the the things that are acting out the the way that the world seems to be in distress all of the conflicts all of the rejections all of the battles going on i i believe our cry of birth pain and the lord spoke to me he said uh, people in pain don't care about you and i don't mean that from a perspective to be negative towards people in pain but what i am saying to those of us who minister to people Sometimes people respond out of pain, and that response may come in anger. It may come in various forms, and you can't take that personally. You have to recognize it as a sign. It's a sign to me they need love. They, it's a sign to me they need healing. It's a sign to me uh, that, that they need what I'm carrying, and not to take it as a personal rejection, but to actually as a sign that they need to be pursued uh, and loved. And I'm watching the Lord just melt hearts. And I would say this finally, uh, uh, for what time it is, it's, it's a season or a year or a time of the heart. Last year was all focused on wash, wash, wash your hands and wear a mask and all of those things. But really it's about clean hands and pure hearts. I believe it's been more of a season about the heart. I think, I believe the heart of the church is being revealed. The heart of, of, of people, the heart of ministries are being revealed in this moment on how on how we love. One of the greatest moments I had last year, it was, you know, a week or two after things were shutting down. I walked, went through a drive through for coffee on a Saturday morning. And this, uh, this young lady was handing me my coffee and I gave her my card and I said, good morning. And I, I mentioned her name that I read off of her name tag. And I said, how are you doing today? And she just began to weep. And I said, honey, are you okay? She goes, nobody's just never been that nice to me before. And I thought, surely somebody's probably been <laughs> that nice to her, or she must have felt that kindness before. But it's, it's the kindness of God that draws people to repentance, not just a turning away of sin, uh, uh, turning away from sin, but it's actually a turning to the Lord. And our kindness and the way our heart reflects Jesus, reflects Father, I, I believe, uh, can cause people to turn their eyes to him. I woke up one morning, and uh, I normally go to bed praying in tongues, wake up praying in tongues, but this particular morning, I woke up singing the words of an old hymn, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace, and I woke up singing that, and the Lord just said, if you and the church will keep your eyes fixed on me, I'll cause the eyes of the world to turn to see what you're looking at, mm -hmm. and so I, I believe, again, it's perspective, it's focus, it's heart. Uh, I believe there's a great humbling or a humility that God is releasing upon those of us in ministry again. Uh, I, I believe that this is a season again of just cultivating the heart, but I also feel that it's a season to, to minister from a healed place. Mm. You know, I, I know what it's like to feel broken and God honors it and shows up because he draws near to the brokenhearted. I'm thankful for that. But man, when you find healing, there comes a greater power and ability to release healing and into those areas of, of people's lives because we've been through something. Yeah. And so it's probably more than the question you asked, but I felt like the Lord was on it. No, yeah, no, it was definitely on it. And you know, I appreciate that perspective of it. And, and, and I'm coming from the same period. And I, I knew I had to go low and slow in the middle of it. And I capture very clearly, as you know, my son-in-law, Rayvon is African-American and, and uh, his mom died early on of COVID. And so he has lost all of his grandparents, lost his parents because, and now mom died of COVID. And that was when the George Floyd went on there. So it was just a lot of tension. So in the middle of it, I yeah. realized the lamb's aspect of Jesus to be broken over the yeah. things that was broken. So kind of have authority over what you weep over so that you can have authority over what you love. And I, so that was my, my journey also in the middle of it, falling in love with a lot of the things that is broken, but also weeping with the one that was weeping and hurting with the one that was hurting and had an incredible opportunity to learning how to love well and then to keeping my love on in the season. So it just, it definitely makes sense. And, and I'm, what are you seeing now? Uh, because even with church, I, I heard one pastor told me yesterday, uh, there's about five churches that only one third of people even coming back to church. They're used to internet. So how do you see church, community, family important? Because I know there's been an attack primary against unity because God wants unity and an attack against family. So help me a little bit there in regard to how do you see community or family or uh, especially a church that is not an orphanage, but a family and the value yeah. of that for believers. 
So I think number one, the Lord is calling us to respond or to be the answer of his own prayer, which is father, make them one as you and I are one. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that he's calling the church to oneness, oneness with the father, oneness with Jesus, the son and oneness with Holy spirit, but also oneness with each other yeah. that, that it's, uh, that it's one heart over one purpose. And I think it, I think we have to embrace the fact that there are, well, let me say this. I believe it comes down to a couple of things, respect and responsibility. I want to respect where people are. And that's whether they, because of compromised immune systems or whatever, where they feel like they have to stay uh, you know, uh, through technology and online. I have to respect that. Uh, but I also have to take personal responsibility to, to make sure that we stay connected to them. And so I believe that the, the, actually the church is being able to, through technology, we're able to reach more people than ever before, but we have to be able to connect to them and bring them into community and creating space where we can minister to them. There's nothing like being in the room together. I understand that. And over uh, time, as, as the Lord bring, continues to bring healing and answers to all of this stuff that we're dealing with to bring us back together. Um, but I, I think it's really important not to uh, not to be mad at those who are doing church differently than us, but to know how to connect to the family heart to heart. And sometimes that makes uh, pastoring or leading a little different because I have to be very intentional to connect to that so people don't fall through the cracks. You know, really interesting is I was doing a, uh, just an Instagram live at one point last, uh, last year. And there was a, a, a woman who was watching in the front room and her husband was a non-believer actually from another faith in the other room. And uh, as he heard what me and the, the other guy were talking about, Holy Spirit came upon her husband. He came into the, in the kitchen, started weeping and gave his life to the Lord. He wouldn't have ever walked into our church or to our meeting, mm -hmm. but the Lord used technology to minister to him. So I believe it, in some ways we need to embrace it. So I think we have to say we're a, a, we're a physical church where, where people gather and we're a family. But there's also a, a virtual aspect of that. And if you don't embrace it correctly, um, you, you'll, you'll miss part of the harvest that the Lord's sending us. I mean, you've been there, Leif. I've, I've been in the bush of, of Uganda and Kenya and Mozambique in the middle of nowhere, where there's no electricity, uh, but everybody has a cell phone, which people have Facebook and you know all of this stuff where they're connecting and able to hear the gospel. So it's a part, I think we need to embrace it and, and use it as a tool for the kingdom of God, which is, which is, I think is really, really important. But one pastor put it this way to me, when COVID hit, he said, we weren't ready for it. And uh, we weren't ready technology, we weren't ready for it in the infrastructure. And we just had to put everything together in a short amount of time. And he said, I knew that we had, instead of, we couldn't lose people. So I assigned pastors and staff for the first time to just reach out to every member and as the feedback they were getting was all the, all the people were saying, oh my goodness, we didn't even know you knew we existed. Mm -hmm. And the Lord really convicted this pastor and said, we've been good at programming people, but not pastoring people. Mm -hmm. So we have a program for everything, but when it comes to pastoring and leading people, um, that's where it really is. And so um, I, I don't want to separate my online audience from my in-person audience. I want to be able to connect to them because there's no distance in the spirit. Yeah. I understand that we can't forsake the assembling of, uh, of ourselves together. It's a command. I believe it's true. But in this season and time, we, we, have to, uh, we have to be flexible and we have to be really, really intentional. And so I hope that makes sense in the description. It does. It because for me, I've been healed from my technophobia that I've had for all these years. That's one of the yeah. benefits where I realized that I've tried to avoid as much technology. I love being there in person. But in this season, there was one, well, I started crying again, but it was one moment just sitting like I do here now, sharing. And it was over 5,000 testimony of the hour that we had all over of healing, presence showing up, angels showing up all over the world, just sitting here and talking to a screen. And I repented afterwards. And I was willing then to, to change as well as like you had been guests on a lot of different places. And then I'm meeting somebody. I, had, I, I was a schizophrenic. I was sexually abused here. People online, stuff that has happened during the year, the testimony and the story and the transformation that happened. Uh, I just realized that uh, 
God is bigger than I think. And I had to change the way I think. It's called repentance. And so I, I'm, I'm embracing both, including what we are doing here now. I'd rather be with you and sit there and hug you. And But I, I feel uh, your presence. I feel I'm there with you. I feel like we are in the same room together to some degree. So uh, I'm very grateful for this technology, but we need to use it in the right way because there's a lot of people that use it in the wrong way. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me something, help a little bit, because I know there's a lot of people out there, they're disappointed, discouraged, even distracted, and perhaps a lot of them dealing with delays. I call it four Ds, disappointed in this season, discouraged and distracted and even seeing a lot of the dreams has been delayed a lot of the words and prophecy and things they had before they went in and certainly it looks like you had a long one year winter season and everything seems to be dying i know springtime is coming but if you have anything to help people uh, healing hope but a sensing that i've been ministering to people in the middle of it and it seems like that there needs to be a resurrection of hope in a lot of the believers what would you have to say yeah. to believers that are struggling right now you know, a couple of years ago, I was flying from Washington, D.C. back to Atlanta on my way to Pensacola. And uh, I looked out the window uh, of the plane and the Lord took me into an open vision as we were kind of flying over Arlington National Cemetery. And I, I saw this open field and I could tell it was a cemetery and I could see graves as long as the eye could see. And uh, the Lord let me zoom in and every uh, gravestone had different names and dates of birth and dates of death, but it all had the same saying or epitaph underneath, which simply said, they died a death by disappointment. Oh. And the Lord said, I'm anointing you to become a healer and a resurrector uh, of those that have died a thousand deaths by disappointment. And so as I begin to answer your question, I want to declare over you the word of the Lord, which is no more death yeah. by disappointment, that the Lord's about to bring resurrection, life and hope into every dream, into every, into every moment. And this moment is a, is, a, is a season of turnaround where God is about to perform miracles in your midst. And I, I really believe that this is important, that so many people are afraid to believe right now because they're afraid of being disappointed. Mm -hmm. I have a, a friend and uh, our friendship started out in a very unusual way. He was a pastor. We were having uh, coffee in a diner and it was a great conversation. All of a sudden, it seemed like he turned on me and he said, uh, he said, you know, the problem with you charismatic people. And I said, no, but I bet you're going to tell me. And he said, the problem is that you uh, put too much pressure on God and you believe too much. And when it doesn't happen, you get disappointed. And I just smiled. And I said, so the reason you don't believe is because you're afraid of being disappointed. And he began to weep because it was the, again, it was a sign. His pain was crying out, but in the midst of it, it revealed what needed to be healed. God reveals to heal. And yeah. so when God brings something, when he identifies something, when he speaks to something, even like what we're doing right now, he's not doing it from a combative way or from a condemning way or even so much a convicting way. He's, he's doing it from a place of saying, hey, I want to redeem that. I'm revealing something in there that, that I want to heal. And, and, and immediately my friend was filled with the Holy Spirit right there sitting around the table. And he was so afraid of being disappointed. He never asked to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so it just all this stuff began to happen because he got rid of the fear of disappointment. And so I believe that the Lord is turning disappointment into divine appointment. And so I, I feel like this, that we, we can and we can put it both maybe in the same thing along with the distraction. I, I believe in Isaiah the book of Isaiah, Isaiah, an amazing prophet, but he got distracted by King Uzziah. Yeah. But in the year that King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. The first five chapters, all woe is you, woe is you, woe is you. And the sixth chapter, when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, his perspective changed, everything changed. Woe is me. And it wasn't like I'm this low worm. It was this cry again. This is the issue. And God came with the remedy, the coal to purify the lips, the presence of God. And he moves into that season in a moment to interrupting a conversation in heaven when somebody quit or somebody said no. He said, here am I, send me. And, and it changes everything. And when that perspective changed, I mean, I don't think anybody could argue that Isaiah uh, was one of the most clear, clear seeing prophets uh, of all of history. He got to see Jesus 
before Jesus ever came. He, he had all of those Messiah prophets. Why? He got over disappointment. He got over his distraction and he saw the Lord. And I just believe that this is a season where we have to get our eyes off of the past, off of the stuff that's happening, and onto the Lord. I remember kind of actually the beginning of COVID, maybe two weeks into it, the Lord just said, stop speaking to fear. Stop preaching about fear. Don't do any series about fear. Don't post about fear. Start speaking to the future. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, to give you a hope and a future. And I, I feel like it's a season that we need prophetically to start talking about the future, not just mm -hmm. about the now, but how we walk through the now actually determines how we enter in to the next. And so I believe the Lord's healing people of disappointment, no more death by disappointment. He's causing that distraction to be removed, to cause our focus and our perspective to be, to be moved back towards him. Why? When my trust is in the Lord, I won't be disappointed. When my trust is in the Lord, I, I won't be distracted. If, if I trust in a system or a government or a job or a bank account or my own giftings, I'm going to be disappointed. But the Lord never disappoints. And so this is a season where the Lord's bringing us into that place of his heart, sometimes dealing with delay. You know, time is the great sifter of dreams. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Joseph, I love the story of Joseph. And if you read the story of Joseph is... There's all of these, you know, I'm sure he thought that dream was going to happen, you know, the next day or in the next few days. And it brings him through 13 or 17 years before it happens. And it's interesting. You never find him complaining. You never see him asking why. Even when he's forgotten about by the baker and the butler, he's, he, he's there and he just goes, Lord, I just know somehow you're going to turn what the enemy meant for evil and, and use it for my good. But they meant for evil. You're going to use for good and he didn't let his heart he kept his heart in the right posture which was towards the lord towards healing he could have been bitter he could have been unforgiving but but instead he he waited the prop uh, the the for the promise the book of psalms says that the dream tested joseph until it came to pass the delay is just a test and the lord didn't forsake us in the midst of the delay or the test he didn't set up set us up to fail the test. He actually taught us everything we need to know to pass the test. Mm -hmm. And so here's what the Lord did to me, Leif, a couple of weeks ago. You'll like this because you like chairs. <laughs> um, I was sitting with I, I was sitting just having this quiet time with the Lord. I have a, a creek in my backyard and a bench. It's a lovely setting. And I, I go there to meet with the Lord when the weather's nice. And uh, I sat there and the Lord, uh, he asked me the question, where are you? And I said, Lord, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting for you. And he said, no, you're not waiting on me or waiting for me. You get to wait with me. Mm. And he had, he had me just turn my position in my chair to look at, like, to just imagine, to dream, to, to see visually through spiritual eyes that he was sitting next to me. Wow. I'm not waiting on God. We're not waiting alone. Like, is this ever going to happen? We get to wait with him, knowing that he's just as excited and expectant uh and 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 wanting us to step into that place of promise as we are why he dreamed that moment up and he's waiting he's waiting with me here but he's also standing in my there watching over that promise day and night because he's careful to perform it Come on. and so if i can if i can realize that i can't just see things through temporary eyes or through the eyes of the natural i have to see my promise through eternal eyes I have to see it through eternal eyes. I have to see it generationally. I have to realize that he who began a work in me is faithful to complete it. And so I'm moving towards it, but I'm not waiting uh, alone. And I think those things are really, really important. And, and I think that this is a season to just d depend on the Lord. You know, I, uh, I loved getting to do what I do. Uh, but last year I had this revelation that my number one assignment isn't to be a prophet. My number one assignment is to be a friend, wow. to be a friend of God, because God isn't looking for some great prophet on a platform or somebody that has tens of thousands or millions of like, you know, followers or likers on uh, social media. He's looking for a friend that he can reveal his secret to. Hmm. And so the way that I avoid those things, the distractions and the disappointments uh, and the delays is to actually stay in his presence. And, and the fourth one was discouragement. You know, I love the story of, of David and Goliath and your 
uh, your, you know, you, you touch on it in, in your amazing book uh, of giant slayers, but um, the, you know, Goliath's greatest weapon wasn't his size or his sword. His greatest weapon was every day yelling from, from God, above those folks, above the people of Israel, above the greatest army in the world, and go, you're nothing. You're nobodies. Nobody's going to rescue you. You're going to be our slaves. We're going we're gonna to destroy you. We're going to kill you. There's going to be nothing left of you. We're going to annihilate you. And they began to let somebody else release a false prophecy over their life, and they just believed it. So instead of speaking to the, to the false with the truth, they, they actually gave into it. They began to hang their heads and hide for their lives until a little shepherd boy showed up with five stones mm -hmm. and a lunch until, and he realized, Hey, who is this who speaks of who speak, who is this guy, this uncircumcised Philippine uh, Philistine to, to speak to us. We're the people of God. And he, and he rises to the occasion. I, I love how the scripture says that David strengthened himself in the lord one translation says he encouraged himself in the lord so if he encouraged himself it tells me that there were moments where he was discouraged how, how do i get through discouragement i encourage myself in the lord i remind myself of the last thing i heard god say the last miracle that i watched him do the last time i got healed the last time he provided for me the last time i felt his presence and i begin to entertain those moments and i begin to speak to the discouragement with the encouragement of the lord that even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you're with me and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You, you lead me to pleasant places. You cause me to lie down in green pastures and gentle streams. You restore my soul. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. You set a table before me in the presence of my enemies and surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And so when I'm looking over my shoulder, I'm not looking at my past catching up or my pain catching up. I'm looking, for, I know I got goodness and mercy following me. And sometimes I just turn around to take a look just to remind myself that mercy and grace, that goodness and mercy are following me. And when you just begin to, you know, what I dwell on, what I agree with, I will align with. Mm -hmm. So are we agreeing with the word of the Lord, the promises of God? Because if I agree with that, I'll align my life and posture my heart towards it. But if I'm agreeing with all this stuff that's happening and I'm spending more time on social media and uh, on Fox News and CNN and MSNBC and all of these things where I'm getting all kinds of information, that information is going to discourage me. Mm -hmm. But here's the great thing about being the sons and daughters of God. We don't live by information. We live by revelation and revelation will set me free from information. Yeah. So I, all I need is a revelation of what God's doing in this moment. And it sets me free from information. I have the information on COVID-19, but I have a revelation that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Uh, and even though no, no weapon formed against me will prosper. I'm, I'm the healed of the Lord. He wants me to be in health and prosper, even as my soul prospers. He said, I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It, it tells me, look, it, here's, I understand COVID's a very real thing and a sad thing, even as you just described with your, your amazing son-in-law that he had to walk through with losing his mom because of it. But, but the, the truth of the matter is that, that Jesus is a redeemer and a healer and a restorer. And it tells me this, that this is a year of healing. Do you want to know what time? It's a year of healing. Uh, it, it's a year where God wants to heal the heart. He wants to heal the home. He wants to heal the church. He wants to heal, you know, all of this stuff. And what I love about this season, life is that he's cured a lot of us from perfectionism. Hmm. Because we had to do meetings like this on the fly with shaky cameras and you and me being not so technologically savvy where, <laughs> you know, we're, we're kind of afraid of it and, and, and didn't know how to work it. And, and nothing was perfect and screens were off and all of those things. And God showed up in the midst of it because he wasn't after perfection. He was after perfecting. He, he wasn't after perfect. He was actually after pure and blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. And I think some of the greatest meetings is we lost the show aspect. We lost the performance aspect. And we just simply had to rely on him. I found myself saying more in 35 minutes than I could say in an hour and a half in a room full of people because I had to be focused. 
and 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 also um you know i'm trying to tie all of this together with with your points you know but but i i think it's a, a real moment right here where I, I just feel like there's some some people right now that your disappointment has led to depression and the lord's healing depression right now he's lifting the weight of worry and care and and fear of disappointment and even feeling disappointed with yourself the lord's bringing healing there some of you even feel like disappointed with god and then you feel guilty because you feel disappointed with god and i want you to know that you have a forgiving father who understands you he knows your thoughts even before you think them and he loves you and he pursues you anyway but if you will put your hope in the Lord, your trust in the Lord, you won't be disappointed. And I'm just, I feel like the Lord is setting some people free in their minds. I feel like anxiety, people are being healed of, of, of anxiety and panic attacks. They're being healed of, 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 of emotional disorders. Even those, I feel like this, this season has stirred up all kinds of PTSD symptoms and the Lord's healing that. And I believe it all begins with the Lord letting you, letting the Lord heal your disappointment. I feel this distraction just to turn your eyes again towards Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. I, 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 I don't want to say I dare you, but I highly exhort you. I almost beg you to get lost in the eyes and the heart of God again, to get lost in his eyes. man. I can tell you that one moment not too long ago, I just got lost in his eyes. And uh, his eyes were so deep and it like it took me down into his heart. And he created this dimension in his heart just for me, he created a dimension in his heart just for you. And just get lost in his eyes, get lost in his love, get lost in his heart again. If you're feeling for delay, I have a word for you that delay will turn into acceleration. Leif and I travel a lot and sometimes you're flying and you get headwinds and it delays you. But if you get in that same jet stream on the way back to where you came from, the very thing that resisted you going will accelerate you on the way back. And so you're just being set up in the delay for an acceleration. And I just believe the Lord's accelerating his promises to you. But don't feel like you're waiting alone. You get to wait with your father. You get to wait in the presence of God. And I, I don't want promise without presence. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things that I could make happen. There's things that I could I can move towards. But I, I want to cry out like, Lord, unless your presence goes with me, uh, I, I'm not going. Even if it looks like my promise, even if it looks so beautiful, if your presence not there, I, I'll wait till you say, let's go there together. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And that place of discouragement God's speaking to right now. I, I know we've all walked through difficult things. And sometimes we feel like we're the only one. I feel, feel like one of the greatest uh, things you've had to face in the season is isolation because it, when we're alone man, we just feel all on our own and nobody understands but you have two guys on this screen today who love you whether we have ever been in a room with you or know you personally or not that you you won't find two guys probably on the face of the planet who who would love you anymore but there's even a greater love named jesus and i want you to know that you are not alone the same presence of god that leif and i are feeling from atlanta and and, and franklin tennessee in two different places but you're watching it take place where the presence is hitting us both at the same time that's falling into your room God is pursuing you. I feel the pursuit of the Father. And I feel like there's going to be some people who watch this over and over again. And I just feel like I don't know how to explain it. I saw the Lord flushing, uh, helping somebody to flush some pills down the toilet today where you've been addicted to pain pills or even have been thinking about just overdosing and going to sleep and getting out of the pain. I break the spirit of suicide off of you and I release a flood of the love of God upon your life to bring you to that place of a hope and a future in the name of Jesus. I feel like there's some of you, it's just you've been in this place of, you've been locked up in your mind and the Lord is, is, is getting ready to set you free. I have a friend and, and I walk through mental illness. If you know my story, I'm, I'm a healed schizophrenic. I'm a healed, uh, I've been healed from mental illness legitimately 24 years ago. And so I have a great sensitivity to it. But I had a friend say it to me one time. He said, you know, you lost your mind to find God's heart. And there's times I know we feel like we're out of our mind, but it's sometimes I got to lose my mind to find God's heart. And maybe you've come to the end of you. 
to find the beginning of him. Maybe you've lost, you feel like you lost your mind, but you're about to find the heart of God today. I believe it. I'm convinced of it. I'm persuaded by it. And you are dearly loved and important to the kingdom. You're dearly important and loved by this family. And I just want to bless you and just declare no more death by disappointment. No more being bound by distractions. No more comparison in those distractions of comparing my experience to your experience. God wants to give you a legitimate experience all of your own. Every place of discouragement and delay, the Lord is lifting it off of you. And I feel a wind of refreshing, the breath of God coming. You know, COVID was an attack against the respiratory system, against the breath. What's, what's the meaning of the name Holy Spirit? The Ruha of God, the breath of God, the sacred breath. And I feel like the Lord uh, is, is bringing healing to physical bodies. Those of you who have the residues of COVID, maybe even still. But also, I feel like the Lord's healing, bringing healing to the church, where maybe we got caught up in structure, but we've missed the breath. And the breath of Holy Spirit is coming back upon us to refresh us, to renew us, to revive us again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wow. Sure. Hmm. I will encourage anyone that is watching or listening just just to rest for a few moments. Just rest and receive. Because what you are receiving, you are becoming. <laughs> and what you are becoming is what you will release. Just Breathe in and breathe out, roll back your shoulders and just receive what God is doing right now. There's healing in his presence. There's freedom in his presence. There's joy in his presence. There's peace in his presence. <laughs> There's provision in his presence. If you have his presence, you have everything. And right now he's just filling your room, just like he did in John 20, 19, when the disciples were quarantined, locked up in a room, struggled with fear. And Jesus filled that room with his presence. That's what's taking place. I feel it here where I'm sitting in my office. The presence just came in. The presence of Jesus. And he's filling your room. He's going to fill your home, your marriage. He's going to fill you. Just be filled. And the purpose of the filling will eventually lead to the spilling. So, who oh, just fill us. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Papa. <laughs> wow. 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 Ooh, I don't want to get over it. I'm going <laughs> to, that was beautiful. I thought about just, uh, what are some of the things, I, I just wanted to have a little fun. What, what are some of the things that makes you laugh in this season? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, um, I, I get caught up. What I feel like this is the Lord wants me to thrive in my every day. Yeah. And so I find laughter in, in watching, it's going to sound kind of silly, but uh, we have these birds around our house. They chase each other and they, then one will turn back. He becomes, he goes from the being pursued to pursuing. And it's just this, this playfulness. And, you know, every day I try to find something to laugh about. And so sometimes I'll just watch something that, you know, isn't, isn't uh, off, you know, off track as far as spiritually goes, but I like to watch a good comedy and to laugh. And I like to sit with my kids and tell dad jokes and they try not to laugh. And because the, uh, they know if they do laugh, it just gets worse. Uh, yeah. That, you know, and, and it's just to find, to find his joy. I find that Jesus has an amazing sense of humor. Yeah. He's not dry. He's not boring. And, you know, he'll just say some amazing, funny things to me. And, um, and so that's just how I live, but it's in his presence, there's fullness of joy and it just flows over. Some of the things I've got from you is it, first of all, we, I, I love our friendship. Uh, we have a lot of fun when we are together. We do laugh. We, we weep together, but we laugh together. We have a lot of fun. 
uh, I was also thinking about, of course, some of the words and prophecy, the way that God has used you, just the gift he has given you and how that's added value to us. And there's so many different areas that I was just reflecting over, uh, just with my gratitude that God brought Molly and David Wagner and later on your kids. I had the honor of getting to know them uh, while I was up there last time in Franklin. So just a family of, of families together. Uh, is there something, if there's something you were to thinking about in regard to our friendship, what would be some of the things that you either I got from it or what it means for you? Because we talked about friendship here that I believe is after sonship, it is the most important ship in the world. Yeah, to, to me, what I, I love is um, I watch you live out what you've, what you've preached on the good days and the bad days, on the hard days and the, and the days that are, you know, just blowing in the breeze. And so I've watched you contend for rest and that um, I think, especially over the last four years, it's really helped me to see my value. Like I've never had a friend text me and go, I'm leaning my heart towards you. And the first time you text that, I didn't know quite how to respond to it, you know, respond to it because sometimes in this, you know, you feel like you're doing things on your own or there's sometimes you go and I've had so many people, I've lost so many people. I don't know if I want anybody else in that spot. And uh, so you feel, you didn't just feel, but you brought healing to a lot of those things. Um, uh, your, your joy is contagious and um, just watching you and Jennifer, uh, just how you minister together, you know, lots like me and Molly, two different styles. Um, but the things that she says are so practical and powerful. The things that you say are, are so deep and, and heart connecting. And, and, and that's what I, I love. And you just the, to see somebody actually committing to and living out covenant. I say it like this, when covenant breaks down, all hell breaks loose. And so if covenant breaks down in a church or in a marriage, if, you know, if, if you go contractual, yeah. you're, you're, you're going to have all hell break loose and you're not going to know what to do because nobody's going to be with you. But if you're true covenant, that's based on trust. It's, it's saying God is in the midst of our friendship and sealed it. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I've learned that from you and just the, the, the deal of time just to, to be, you know, I love the fact that you love Waffle House. <laughs> right? it's 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 because i mean we know how to eat filet mignon and we know how to eat you know the greatest sushi and seafood but there's also something about smothered covered and peppered you know um and 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 it's just it's 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 this real it's the realness yeah. and 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 it's the heart connect and so uh, and i really appreciate that and and, and, and love that about you, you you've You've been an answer to prayer and, and a true gift to, to Molly and I, and, um, and my, my kids love you as well, for sure. And, uh, <laughs> I love yours uh, as well. And uh, I wish our kids didn't have to grow up and move away so much. Yeah. But. Now we talked to Will Hart and I was talking last night and again, another dear friend of both of us. And, uh, and I know that as I said, we, I think we all need to show up in Franklin sometimes in the near future and just uh, hang out and do life and, have fun and I so I, I I'm committed within the next at least six weeks I'm heading to Pakistan in uh, in April in about a month now so I've made a decision but I, I'm going to make sure that I find a way to get up to see you and just to hang out and and just just do life together for no not for ministry just for for friendship because that means so much to me David I thank you so much for taking this time to invest in me invest in our kingdom family movement that you are so much part of and I just uh, asking that this thing, I mean, what, what we just experienced here, I think people could watch it over and over again, because I felt that there's healing in his presence taking place as, yeah. as you were sharing. So again, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Bless you. Love you much. Love you too. Catch you later. <laughs>